Hello, in this video, we will start to exploring the second model in our ARIMA uh, box Jenkins model. That is our AR term. In the last video, we spent a lot of time to understanding what is our M MA term. So we learned that uh, uh, MA is moving average, but it's more accurately should call it um, uh, ex uh, the weighted average because it's actually is a look more look like our exponential smoothing models. So in that model, our uh, explanatory variable is our white noise or the uh, um, uh, or the residuals, and then we are able to use the ACF diagram to look to uh, to identify where we see the spike to see how many MA term we should include it in our box Jenkins model. So in this video, we're going to focus on the AR term. So what is the AR term? So the AR term is our autoregression models, autoregressive model. So uh, this autoregressive model is look very similar as what we see in, in our uh, MA model. The big difference is what we are seeing on the right hand side. So in the MA model, the right hand side are the white noises or residuals. However, in the autoregressive model, on the right hand side are all my time series model, time series itself. So um, like I said, um, it is very similar to MA model, except the dependent variable Y depend on its own previous values. So this is called the autoregressive model. Okay. So uh, if we threw the white noise into the model, and what we're gonna get. So let's use white noise and we put it into the AR1 model. And in the third column, uh, it is the value we will be able to receive when we pick certain variable for the, uh, the, the A1 parameters. So we are able to spill out different outcomes. So the fourth column here is AR2. And so that's what we through the white noise in the AR2 model, that's the output we will get. Okay, so now the big question is, how many AR term we need it, or do we need any AR terms? And a similar idea we are apply to the MA model, we will apply to our AR model. So for the MA model, we rely on the auto regret auto correlation function, which is our ACF uh, diagram. But when we are this uh, try to see if we need AR term, we need to focus on the partial auto regressive function ACP diagram. So uh, in the previous video, we look at our MA model for the PAC diagram. It is like a, a slowly uh, decreasing or alternative up and down, right? But if we are looking at the time series data that has the uh, uh, need AR term to capturing the pattern, we will see that our ACF diagram will have a spike. So as you can see on the left-hand side diagram, it is uh, uh, the time series will explicit our AR term one. The reason is AR term one without MA is because our AC, uh, ACF diagram doesn't have any spike, right? So it doesn't have any spike, but for our PAC diagram, we do see a spike, we see one spike. So in that case, we will consider, uh, we will use the AR1 model to capture the time series pattern. So on the right hand side, the full diagram is showing the ACF and the PACF for the AR2 model. As you can see for the ACF diagram, they are just slowly dying down, but for the uh, PAC, uh, PACF diagram, we are able to see two spike. They are either in the positive side or take alternative. So both situation, we should consider use AR2, uh, AR2 to capturing the time series pattern. So here is a more uh, using the real world data we're feeding to our forecast X. So that will be the two, uh, uh, the diagram ACF and the PACF we will receive. So it's different from the theoretical diagram we see previously because we are actually able to see uh, the confidence interval. So the same logic will apply to the uh, PAC, uh, PACF diagram to determine if we need a, uh, the, uh, how many AR terms. So as you see the uh, diagram in the bottom, so that is our PACF diagram, we are able to observe one spike, okay? We are able to observe one spike. Although we do see more up and down uh, spikes, but they are not considered as a spike because they are within my 95% confidence interval, therefore they are not statistically significantly different from zero. So the only one spike we saw is the one our statistically significantly different from zero. So this will be able to capture by AR1 model. Okay, so I'm just gonna look at the top diagram. 
ACF, and you also see the spike, right? So then you're gonna start to ask, Dr. J, are we only use AR1? Should we just ignore the MA1? So the answer is not. So this is a good question because that's leading to our next question is about the ARMA model. Okay, ARMA model. So we are actually able to combine, look at the track based on the ACF and the PACF to determine are we needing, uh, are we only need the AR term? Are we need, only need the MA term or we need both AR and MA term? Okay, so first look at the diagram A. So look at um, diagram A. Okay, so this is my diagram A. So we are see the ACF, there is no spike, right? So there are just turn alternative slowly dying down. But in our partial um, uh, partial autogressive function, PAC, we see one spike. So therefore, for the first diagram, it will be more proper to use uh, AR1 model. Now we look at the diagram two. So in our ACF diagram, we see one spike. And we also see one spike in our PACF diagram. So therefore, in this mod, uh, time series, we should use AR1 and MA1. Okay, so usually we don't write this with AR1 or MA1. We just wrote AR, MA, 1, and 1. Okay, so now if we look at the third diagram, so they both dying down, and so we don't need the ARMA model. And then also the last one, they all both dying down as well. So this uh, will be AR, uh, AR, both of them will be ARMA, 0, and 0, because we don't see any spike. Okay, so all these four diagrams are theoretical because we didn't really fit in the real data. So we can, uh, uh, in the real data, we should be able to see the 95 confidence interval to determine